gun control legislation. What is Florida doing? I'm talking policy-wise here. What have they actually done after the deadly shooting last month? Florida's Attorney General Pam Bondi joins us now. Uh, Ma'am Attorney General, can you tell us exactly what Florida has done? Not what you're debating, not what you're thinking about. What concrete action has been taken? Well, it's in the process of being taken, Stuart. Um, it is on the floor of the Senate today at 10 o'clock, and then it will be in the House for final passage either Tuesday or Wednesday. So we're in the very final stages. And what that bill includes is Governor Scott, Rick Scott, has become a champion of this. He brought all sides together. You know, in a time of crisis, it's about finding common ground, and that's what Governor Scott's done. So this is a comprehensive package. It's $450 million, and Speaker Negron and, uh, I mean, Speaker, Speaker Corcoran and Senate President Negron support this, and it's been um, a great act of everyone coming together. It's $450 million. What it does is it provides school security. It's going to ensure that every school in Florida is much safer, infrastructure, um, everything that we need to keep our schools safe. Okay. It's going to provide um, law enforcement officers for every thousand students, a school resource officer, and that was something that was lacking in our state, as well as mental health, which is huge. It has a gun violence restraining order in there. It raises the age of purchasing an assault rifle to 21, and it's banning bump stocks. Okay, now that's a comprehensive more, approach. I got it, and that's what you've, uh, you're about to do that. Now, yes. there are 24 states that are pushing bills that would allow for guns to be taken away from people who are judged mentally unfit. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know whether Florida is one of those states, but what do you think yes. about that kind of move? Well, uh, well, here, here, here's what we're doing in Florida because we want to, uh, we have to have due process, of course, for those who have been civilly committed. And my office, we've done all the legal research, and, and here's what our proposal is in Florida. It's called the Gun Violence Restraining Order. And so, Stuart, if you're civilly commi committed in Florida, it's called a Baker Act. What will happen is law enforcement can and should automatically remove any firearms because that shows your. You're a danger to yourself or others when you're civilly committed. Then after someone is released from civil commitment, law enforcement will have 72 hours to take to go before a judge and ask the judge if they choose to hold those guns even longer if they feel that the person is, again, a threat to themselves or to others. Okay. You've been in the room uh, in the White House when the president was having an open, free-for-all discussion both sides of the aisle involved. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, th this is my opinion now, I think that has made a significant difference in the gun debate. And you were in the room. Yeah, I was, Stuart. You know, I was also in the room for a very private meeting recently that, that the president had with, um, with families from, from Texas, from Sandy Hook, from, of course, Parkland. And he truly cares. And again, this is about finding common ground. That's why nothing ever gets done in Congress, in my opinion. People are so polarized to one side or the other. And, you know, we just experienced a traumatic school shooting in Florida. And it's finding common ground, something that both sides can agree on. And, and President Trump has been just amazing listening to these families and, and really being a mediator, I think, with Congress. And hopefully Congress will follow Florida's lead and what Governor Scott's been doing here in Florida and all of us working so well together. Pam Bondi, Attorney General of the State of Florida, thank you very much for being with us this morning. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. Thank you, Stuart.